For me, the best vada pav in the world isn't the traditional Indian version. It's this East African incarnation inspired by the way my family have made it for generations. It all begins with a spicy pomegranate lime and cinnamon potato fritter. We'll begin by making the batter. In a bowl, mix together gram flour, salt, turmeric, lime juice and warm water. Add the water gradually, whisking as you mix. This will ensure that the batter remains lump free. It's important to get the batter to the right consistency. It needs to be thick enough to coat the potato balls without sliding off or being too thick. This is quite a viscous batter, which means it's only really suitable for deep frying. You don't want to try and air fry these butter tawala. Once the batter has the viscosity of custard, you are ready to go. I've microwaved these potatoes until they're soft, and I really advocate for microwaving your potatoes. Microwaving not only cooks them quickly, it also ensures that the potatoes don't become waterlogged, which will affect the consistency of your mashed potato mixture. Once they're cool enough to handle, peel them and set them aside. One of the key differences between these East African Gujarati style Bhattatawara and the Maharashtrian Indian version is that these contain pomegranate seeds. A burst of juicy freshness. The sweet and sour flavour of the pomegranate seeds is a lovely contrast to the spicy, chilli heat. As well as adding pomegranate seeds, I like to add golden sultanas, which also give a lovely sweetness. Now that I've finished wrestling with this pomegranate, we can move on to making the spicy potato filling. Place the potatoes into a bowl and give them a rough mash with a potato masher or using the back of a spoon. Try not to make them too smooth. In fact, some lumps are actually quite desirable in this since they give the Bhattadavara a delicious, interesting texture. I'm going to go ahead and in quick succession add in the rest of my ingredients including green chilli, coriander, lime zest, cinnamon, chilli powder, salt, sugar, lime juice, onion, sultanas, those pomegranate seeds and some dehydrated mashed potato. The mashed potato really helps with the consistency of the potatoes, especially if they're a little bit on the watery side and helps to hold everything together. Now give this a very thorough mix, taking care not to make the potatoes too smooth because remember we want some interesting texture in these. You may disagree, but I believe the concept of authenticity in food is subjective, shaped by our personal journeys. My story is laced with the footprints of my ancestors travelling from Gujarat in Western India to South Africa, Mozambique, Tanzania, Kenya and the UK. It's a journey many Indians took under colonial rule and through indentured labour systems. Each step collected flavours and experiences that have now melded into the food we cook, eat and share. Now that our potatoes have had a thorough mixing, we're going to divide these into 15 equal portions. Roll these into balls and set them aside, ready for coating. If you find that your potato mixture isn't coming together, it might be because there's excess water in the mixture. In order to rectify this, all you need to do is add a little bit more of that dehydrated mashed potato powder. It'll soak up any of that excess liquid without drastically changing the flavour too much. And that's it, these are ready. You can set them aside until you're ready to fry. And next we're going to move on to making the kachumbari a Swahili style salad made of fresh vegetables. It's quite like a slaw. To make it, all you need to do is mix together shredded cabbage, cucumber, tomato, mint and coriander, lime juice, roasted cumin seeds, which have been coarsely ground, some red chili powder, salt, sugar, and extra virgin olive oil. Give this all a really good mix and then pop the katumbari into the fridge so that it's nice and cold when you're ready to serve. This kind of salad is delicious with the vada pao and you can also serve it with your favourite kebabs or skewered meals. Heat enough oil in a pan suitable for deep frying to about 175 degrees Celsius. We want to take one of our potato balls and dip it in that thick luscious batter. Make sure it's really well coated and then very carefully pop these one by one into the oil. Do not do this from a height because otherwise it's going to splash oil at you. You really want to get as close to the oil as possible without burning your fingers and just carefully drop them in. 
Take care not to overcrowd the pan by frying too many at once because this will cause the oil temperature to drop, leaving you with greasy batadora, which nobody wants. Leave these alone for around 20 seconds while the batter sets up on one side and then start turning them very gently. Fry the batadora until they are golden all over about three to four minutes. The reason why we can't air fry the butter devara is because of this thick and gloopy batter which will just run off leaving a big mess inside your air fryer. However, what you can do is deep fry the butter devara ahead of time and then reheat them in the air fryer so that they become nice and crispy on the outside. These are now looking beautifully golden, they're ready to lift out of the oil and I'm just going to pop them on a plate lined with absorbent kitchen paper. If you like, you can also deep fry some chilies, which are a traditional accompaniment to Varapao, but ensure you dock the chilies all over before frying them, otherwise they're going to explode in your oil. Very dangerous. And let me quickly show you what the inside of the butadavara looks like just after they've been fried. These are absolutely steaming hot, so be careful, mind your fingers. So delicious, so flavoursome, very zesty and tangy and sour, sweet, all of the good stuff. You can serve these butter just as they are with some chutney, but today we're going to make our famous varapao. For this I'm going to need some bread buns, these are just soft and fluffy dinner rolls which I've split in half and then I'm going to add in some sweet and sour tamarind chutney. Then I'll top this off with that cold slaw straight from the fridge, it's so fresh and crunchy. One of our hot butter tawara goes on top of that. Some crispy bits of the batter that I had left over which I just fried. And that's it, you are ready to eat. This is such a fabulous crowd-pleasing dish. A wonderful summer snack with street food vibes. I hope you enjoy this. You can find the written measurements over on my website, sanjanafeasts.co.uk, where there are handy printable recipe cards. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then please do. And I will see you next time. Enjoy.